TED seems like a place for big ideas. So I have some big ideas I'd like to share with you. I think big ideas start by asking big questions, and I happen to be a fan of big questions. Any other fans of big questions here? Excellent. I think the best big questions start with these words, why, what, and how. Why are we here? That's a great example of a big question. What is my purpose? Or how can I find my true path in life? Big questions. Let's have some big answers, OK? Why are we here? What is my purpose? Here's my big answer. I don't know. I'm not you. But this question, how can I find my true path in life? I think that's a good question. We're all on a path of some kind. And we can see a certain distance down that path. We have a sense of where we're heading. But sometimes the path is different. Sometimes it's a path others have been on before. Sometimes it's a sheltered path. Sometimes it's an open path. Sometimes it curves. We can't see the destination, what's around the corner. But we can see the path itself. Other times, we can very clearly see the destination, but we have no idea what the path is that gets us there. So I think when we ask how, what we're really talking about is how do I decide? How do I make decisions on the path, on the destination of where I need to go? I think that is the key to being a productive human. Now, productive, I think, is a loaded term. What do we talk about when we actually talk about productivity? I think if you were to do an image search, say, for productive, you end up with things like this. People doing things, having multiple screens in front of them, multiple devices. We've probably all been kind of this person who's got lots of things going on at once, and we feel busy, we feel productive, because I'm doing things, right? So, busy is not necessarily the same as productive. In fact, I think being productive really comes down to how we think about three major things. Goals, the tools we use to achieve those goals, and then the habits we develop to combine those goals and tools. So how do we make decisions about the combination of the goals and tools and habits? We need rules, right? A basic sense of how we're going to do these things that combine the goals, tools, and habits with our resources of time and attention, which are limited every day. So these rules for making decisions are effectively our operating system, right? If you think about your, your Mac operating system, your Windows PC, they have this basic thing that underlines all the other stuff you do on top of it. So we have an operating system as well. I call mine my OS. You can come up with your own name for yours. I want to share how I came up with my operating system and really helped myself feel more productive and answer a lot more of these how questions. Um, and basically just learn how to be a better human. So these are my five rules for productive humans. Now I want you to picture these rules as kind of a, a snowball. Each builds off of the central core of the one before it. And it's really important to think about the central core at the heart of everything. everything. If you don't remember anything else from this talk, please just remember this first rule for being productive, for being a better human, is to be honest. You have to start with real honesty when you're making decisions, when you're making the smallest decision to the grandest decision. And there's two ways to think about honesty. There's objective honesty, which can be, oh, I sold five paintings. There's a quantity, and it's very clear to see. I, I did this thing, and I have this number. There's also the subjective honesty, and this is where things get tricky for humans. We have a lot of inner gut feelings that may not match the objective things that we're seeing in the world or the things that we're hearing from others. We may not like the way these two come together, but it's the meshing of the objective and subjective honesty that we really have to look at together. That's the only way to be honest with yourself. When you're honest with yourself about how you feel, about your time and attention, about the resources you have available, 
then you can be more honest with others. But being honest with others is often tricky in itself, which brings us to the second rule. Be unafraid. We have trouble being honest with people if we're afraid of what it might mean or what it might cause them, what it might cause us, what we might lose. We have a lot of these but what if questions that pop into our minds about the consequences of being honest and trying to follow what we really feel or want or the goals we've decided on. Often these are just irrational and you have to be unafraid and be comfortable with the possibility that something might go wrong, that you might fail, that you might have to have a difficult conversation. But that failure makes you stronger. You will learn more from the ways that you fall down than you do by walking successfully. Which takes us to number three, be mindful. Once you're more aware of your honest feelings and you're unafraid, be mindful then of how you implement those feelings and those decisions in the actions that you take. When you work with intent and think about how you're using your tools, how you're using your time and attention, you'll make uh, better use of both the tool and of yourself. Tools get in the way though, because sometimes the tools will use us. We get so caught up in the features that somebody else has created from some app that we think is gonna solve our problem, but really we just end up getting caught up in trying to optimize our, work, our workspace or trying to get this other new tool that's gonna solve the problem that the first tool created. So don't let your tools use you. Often the simplest tools are all you need to achieve great things. You could practically build a house with some of the tools on that slide. Which then takes us to the fourth rule, be active. Once you've got this understanding of your relationship with your honesty, you're unafraid to be mindful about and take your time, then you can be active in how you use your time and attention successfully. Sometimes if we're not mindful and we're not active, we find ourselves on a path that ends up right back just a little bit further from where we started. Um, I've often felt like this on a Monday. Maybe that's just me. But that doesn't mean that we can't recover. It's possible to, be, possible to stop and be still and still be active. Be active and mindful in that stillness and take that opportunity to remember that you are your best tool. And I mean this in the kindest way. <laughs> you have to take care of that tool though, right? If the tool doesn't suit the need, then you find a better tool or you improve the tool you have. And if that tool is you, how do you improve yourself? Active growth, seek out new challenges, learn from them, and then be sure to implement them and test. Be honest if it's working and reject it if it's not working. Move on to something else. Once you learn, that takes us to the fifth and final rule of being nice. Be nice to your fellow humans even if you don't like them, by making the most of what you've learned for yourself, putting your skills to the best use you have. And then remember that their why, what, and how questions may be very different from yours. They may be asking, why am I sad? What am I going to eat tonight? How am I gonna find a job? Be sympathetic and understanding, and when you get help from somebody else, don't take that from granted. Be nice when you receive, as well as when you give. And then, of course, don't forget to be nice to yourself. Treat yourself. Be good to the tool, the mind, the body, the life you have. And treat yourself and others and the planet the way you would like to be treated. That's the golden rule, right? So here you go, five rules. Be honest, unafraid, mindful, active, and nice. And if you're really savvy, you may have noticed, these are pretty easy to remember. Be 100% human. It's that simple. So there's a how question for you. Maybe that's an answer you can use. Let's come back to why. Why bother going 
trying to be the best person you can be? Why bother trying to be productive? One word, sharing. I believe that sharing is the reason we are here on this planet. We all have part of us inside a primal thing that wants to let the world know we were here. We want to leave a mark. This is a, a cave painting that's 10,000 years old from Indonesia. People have been needing to leave a, a sense of their presence here for thousands of years. How is that any different from this? We still have this need to leave our mark in the world and say, I was here, or I feel this way. Again, another cave, this is the uh, Les Gros Caves in France, um, also about 10,000 years old. Paleolithic people describing the world, sharing stories. How is that any different from this? I don't know what that story might be, but others do. It speaks to people, and it expresses a human need. Just like this, as I was here. How's that any different from this? The passion, the expression, the memory. The point of being here and being human is to share. So why not go out and start? Share the art you see, share friendship, share love, share your path, share your adventure. Share what you discover around the corner, down the street. Share what you find beyond the unknown. What lies behind us, what lies before us, are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. Famous quote, remember what lies within you and share your journey along your path. So the big question remaining, what? are you going to share? As long as you share honestly, you're unafraid, you're mindful, you're active, and you're nice, you share human, start now. Be human, share human. Thank you. <laughs>